So let's talk about the risks of weight loss surgery. I think it's important to put weight loss surgery into perspective compared to other similar abdominal operations or other similar um, interventions. Any abdominal operation that we perform, even if I'm operating on an 18-year-old Olympic athlete to take their appendix out, they have risks that look a lot like this. Now certainly, depending on your starting health, and depending on the degree of the intervention, the, the amount of the risk goes up. But it's surprisingly low for weight loss surgery uh, in the realm of other abdominal operations. I want to specifically go through these one by one, though. Uh, and certainly, we can have a, more discussion about this. Uh, the biggest concern that we have, the biggest risk to your life with any abdominal operation, uh, almost any abdominal operation, uh, is a pulmonary embolus. That is a blood clot that starts in your legs uh, and goes up to your lungs or to your heart and, and blocks your heart or blocks your lungs off. And, and that can kill rapidly. It can kill early, uh, within the first few days of an operation, or it can ki even kill uh, months later for people who've had blood clots before uh, are at the higher risk, uh, uh, of course. Um, blood clots are what killed uh, Andy Warhol after his gallbladder operation, uh, or um, David Bloom, the reporter, on his flight uh, to Afghanistan. Um, so they are not uncommon. They are, they are very common killers after um, orthopedic procedures uh, and with cancer surgery. So it's something that we're used to worrying about in all sorts of people. People who are heavy definitely have a higher risk than average of blood clots, but we can manage that risk downward. And I think uh, if there's one main point I can make on this slide is that we can never eliminate risk uh, in people, but it is our job to manage it to minimize any individual risk. Now, interestingly, pulmonary embolus is the one intervention where we actually raise the risk slightly of another problem, and that is because we do give a light blood thinner to everybody to prevent blood clots from forming, we actually increase your risk of bleeding very slightly. Now, it's only for the most part important for people who are Jehovah's Witnesses because we don't want to do anything to increase that bleeding risk if you have an absolute contraindication, an absolute uh, never ever rule for a blood transfusion. We don't have to give blood transfusions probably even to one or two in a hundred patients, but that is occasionally necessary um, or recommended, and certainly if you're Jehovah's Witness we'll, we'll avoid the blood thinner. Uh, that's where we individualize uh, for you. Um, and that's true in many different things. Now, the other risk that we worry the most about specifically in gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy surgery uh, and duodenal switch operation is what's called an anastomotic leak. And when we take tissue and divide uh, a tubular structure like bowel and we sew it together, uh, if things do not heal properly, then the fluid leaks out into the abdominal cavity proper. Neither pulmonary embolus nor anastomotic leak usually kills. Uh, when it happens, it's often manageable, uh, and, and people walk out of the hospital quite often, uh, just a few weeks later, doing great. But they are the number one and two highest risk of people who do, of the very few people who do die from surgery, those are the most common problems. So I don't want to make it sound like any of these things is a death sentence because, again, even even these problems are usually survivable. Um, other um, issues that can happen with any abdominal operation, you can have adhesions inside the abdomen, uh, whether it's an appendectomy, gallbladder surgery, hysterectomy, uh, even C-section, and those adhesions can cause what's called a bowel obstruction or kinking or twisting of the small bowel or the colon so that it's blocked off. That usually requires another operation to unkink things, um, more than half the time after gastric bypass surgery in particular, when people get this, they need to have an operation. After some bowel obstructions, uh, the literature shows like after appendectomy and, and routine operations, uh, most bowel obstructions resolve on their own. And most people don't get a bowel obstruction, um, but it's certainly a risk. And it can happen early or late, if you see it's on both sides of this, uh, of this slide. Um, bleeding certainly can happen with any operation that we do. Um, even the most minimally invasive, even cutting a word off, you can have bleeding as a complication, especially if you're on a blood thinner, especially if you have a, a bleeding problem in your family, but uh, anybody is at some risk of this. 
infection. There are two different types of infection you can have. You can have a local infection in the abdomen or in a wound. Um, those are usually quite manageable. You can also get a pneumonia, which is an infection in your lungs, and that's the next line down. Uh, these are usually not fatal. However, um, we see people every day coming in with infections from, uh, uh, from other issues, and it certainly can take your life. Any of these things can kill you. Um, heart attacks uh, certainly can happen. A lot of our patients have heart disease. A lot of patients have had previous heart attacks. Uh, we can do things, again, to minimize that risk of heart attack around the time of surgery, but they still can happen, and they can happen in people who don't have uh, known heart disease. Uh, and that's true, like I say, of any operation we do. Um, dehydration is very common, especially after a gastric bypass surgery, where people are just working, especially those first couple of weeks, to get enough fluid in. Um, and and uh, it, is, it is real work to get hydration. With any operation, we always sort of put this in as a general catch-all that death or permanent disability can result. And this is not a complete list of things that can happen uh, after an operation, uh, especially after weight loss surgery, but these are the, these are the main issues. Um, certainly some specifics also on the long-term uh, issues. Ulcers can happen at, uh, at, a, at a higher rate than after having your appendix out. We're operating on your upper stomach. Uh, we're creating uh, a zone that's more at risk. Um, it's particularly bad for people who take heavy-duty non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and there's a long list of those types of meds, but they're mostly related to aspirin, ibuprofen, Aleve, Advil, if you will. So you have to be very careful with those. You have to be very careful with smoking. Uh, and even if you're perfect, ulcers certainly can happen, but usually it's at those higher risk uh, uh, issues. Bowel blockage, like I already said, can happen early or late. Malnutrition can happen late. It's usually a very specific thing, like being low on calcium in particular, or low on vitamin B12. Um, it's not very common in people who follow a regular diet and take their vitamins. But even then, even if you're uh, compliant, you can end up with certain uh, specific areas of malnutrition that need to be dealt with. This is why it's important to get good follow-up. The lap band, I already talked about in the previous segment, can slip. Uh, the, the adjustable gastric band, pardon me, can slip. It can erode. Um, anybody with weight loss can have skin fold problems. Insurance does not always cover a tummy tuck. Most patients don't need one, uh, but certainly those who do uh, often, uh, often can get insurance coverage if they're having um, um, moisture problems or, or fungal problems. Weight regain can certainly happen after any operation. Uh, it's not necessarily a complication, um, but I don't want to make it sound like these operations are automatic either. Um, and and uh, that can be something where the individual person has problems, where they um, just can't make any food choices or any changes. It also can be a problem, uh, especially like we talked about with uh, adjustable gastric banding, where the tool just doesn't work for the patient. Um, and this is where we especially don't know um, with the sleeve, if there are some people who the sleeve just is not a strong enough operation for. Uh, I think those folks particularly will want to go more to a duodenal switch operation if they fail very early, uh, or if they fail late, um, or if the operation fails them late, maybe consider a gastric bypass uh, as a conversion operation. Possible future problems, uh, this is just other longer term things that can happen. Nausea and vomiting, we see very commonly patients having occasional nausea and vomiting, and certainly if you get an ulcer, if you have a bowel obstruction, you'll have severe nausea and vomiting. Usually we can deal with that and it's not a permanent situation. There are a few people who do describe permanent nausea uh, after weight loss surgery. Most patients, it's the first six months, we call it six months of morning sickness. That's when the weight is almost just falling off of you. Uh, we also call it the honeymoon because it's great that way. Uh, it's not that you can't eat, but you just don't have much of an appetite. And food definitely does taste different. Uh, food intolerances, some people just don't like the taste of certain foods afterwards. So sometimes it's foods that they really loved. I still don't really like the taste of Diet Coke two and a half years after my sleeve. I can drink it, but boy, the first six months it just tasted very metallic to me. Uh, and I lived on this stuff before. Hair loss is not usually um, a long-term thing. It happens between six and 18 months. The hair usually comes back. Um, vitamin B12 deficiency, iron deficiency. We uh, haven't talked about kidney stones and gallstones. Those can happen long-term. If you've had a lot of kidney stones before, especially the Mayo Clinic would uh, give us a good uh, information that, that, that they've seen a lot of patients uh, 
have problems with kidney stones. They see people from around the world though. Um, most of us have not seen, many patients have the terrible problems that the Mayo Clinic has seen in a few patients. Um, certainly a lot of people have gallstones when they lose weight, even without surgery. Uh, and it's a very common problem after weight loss surgery to need your gallbladder out later. We used to take everybody's gallbladder out, but literature showed us that at least half of people never need their gallbladder out, um, and, and probably more than that. Um, hernias, emotional stress is underappreciated as people lose weight and their social situations change. Uh, it can be really stressful. I say it's like winning the lottery where you uh, many things are changed for the better, but change can be threatening and you have to be ready for this potentially, that, especially that first year or two as your social um, interactions change with families and friends. Medications can be uh, absorbed differently and sometimes just have a different effect. So you have to be ready to adjust medications in coordination with your primary doctor or your specialty doctor who's managing that and with us as well. Now other compulsive behaviors can slip in. Sometimes people have a, a gambling problem. Alcohol is probably the biggest problem I've seen. Usually people had an alcohol problem before or a vulnerability. But we have to be very aware of this. Sometimes people can have um, promiscuous sexual behavior, um, shopping problems, um, other compulsive behaviors. Please be aware this is a, a potential. It's not something that we see um, wrecking people's lives that often, but it doesn't take that much sometimes to uh, alter your marriage or you know to, to cause major uh, setbacks. So you have to be aware of these risks and I think go forward knowledgeable and prepared. The relative safety of bariatric surgery, uh, and I wish I had more stuff on this slide. These slides to the left um, are, are, these numbers to the left are um, bariatric surgery studies showing, if you look in the general, these are all less than 1 in 100 30 day mortality. So your risk of dying is less than 1 in 100, and overall it's about 1 in 300 of dying in 30 days after surgery. Um, now, if you look on the other side with um, coronary artery bypass grafting, so-called a cabbage procedure, heart surgery, uh, bowel obstruction operations. Actually, now, this is a this is all comers. So these are some very old people, some very sick people. These are people who were getting ready for surgery. We've been able to manage their pr procedures, and some of these folks are emergency procedures. But if you look at even joint replacement surgery, the mortality and I don't have joint replacement on here is about one percent for just joint replacement. If people rarely come up to a little old lady at church and say, why are you having this risky drastic procedure, even though it's not a life-saving procedure for most people. So again, if you can put it in perspective for your family, for your loved ones, yes, I understand this has risk. This is not zero risk, but it is not disproportionate risk. And I think that's what's commonly misunderstood. You usually see people talk about weight loss surgery in the popular literature, in the newspaper or people magazine, always in the first paragraph the words, risky and drastic are in there. And then you never hear of somebody having a risky, drastic colon operation for colon cancer. They just, oh, they had colon cancer, they had to have it out. So I think it, it just, if you can help your family and people who love you, put the risk into perspective, especially if they don't understand the risk of obesity, uh, that will really help uh, them understand uh, what, your, what, your, what your priorities are and that you understand what you're getting into as well. So comparing Safety and effectiveness, this is just the various procedures as we go up through the sort of invasiveness of the procedure, band versus sleeve versus uh, duodenal switch. The 30-day mortality does go up, um, but the weight loss also goes up as well. And you can see the duodenal switch really is the most powerful. Uh, the gastric bypass, however, is very good, and the sleeve is also very good, um, So, as is the band. Um, this just shows the diabetes resolution. Again, the duodenal switch is up here. Very, very effective. Um, and this just combines the two. 